Welcome to Man Crafting. Today I'm going to build a stand for a new buffer that I just got. My old buffer was out of balance and the motor was coming loose and I'd have to go in and take it apart and tighten it back up. And so I wanted a buffer that I knew had a little bit higher quality. But the other thing about the buffer was that it created a lot of vibration and the table that I had it on would shake if I had it bolted down. If I didn't have it bolted down, it would dance across the table. So I wanted to build something that was stable, that was heavy, and that could definitely handle the rigors of a buffer being used in full motion. So I went to a local metal supplier. I was able to get a piece of scrap metal that they had cut wrong and had to replace so I was able to get a good deal on this I think I paid I don't even recall but less than fifty dollars for that and I got an 11 by 9 base plate which will fit perfectly uh, the buffer base that I have and then some four inch pipe and I'm gonna basically clean these up weld them together drill them out and I'll have myself a nice, sturdy, reasonably inexpensive stand compared to the other ones I've looked at online. And ultimately I'm going to add wheels to this so I can make it portable because I do have some limited space and sometimes in order to do a project I'm gonna need space that tools are normally sitting in. I want to put a couple wheels on the back of this so all I have to do is tilt it back a little bit and I can kind of roll it across the floor. So watch with me as I put this together. I've got a couple of uh, ideas on how to make this work and I hope you enjoy this video. Well, the first step in any welding project is to make sure that your metal's clean. So here I'm grinding off all the areas. Once the areas are clean, I'll mark the locations where I want to place the parts to weld. Here I just do a couple tacks to hold the pipe in place, and then I start to do the bead all the way around. On the top part, it's uh, right at the limits of the capacity for my welder, and on the base, I was way past the capacity of this welder. It's really only supposed to be welding quarter inch. In order to make it work, what I did is I heated the part, which you can't see in this video, but I heated the part with a propane torch, and then I welded a second bead around, and that allowed it to get a little bit better penetration. Again, this isn't structural, and I'm not real concerned about the weld not holding in this case. I think that the weld is more than adequate for this particular purpose. And here's my new buffer from Eastwood. I'm bolting it down. I just uh, have two anchor points. Okay, well that's it for tonight. The stand is completed. I may still finish this with either a clear coat or prime it and paint it. I'm not sure what I want to do. I like the look of the polished seal, so I'm probably going to clear coat it. I don't get to test this thing out today. I have to say I'm a little disappointed in myself. I didn't notice that this package did not come with buffing wheels. And this is an industrial buffer. So Lowe's and Home Depot locally don't carry a 10 inch buffing wheel. And five inch or six inch, because this stud is so large, they're not gonna fit on this. It's a three quarter inch, so I need at least a three quarter inch inside diameter on the buffing wheel, and five and six inch happen to be five eighths of an inch. I'll put those, uh, I'll get those on order tonight. In the next day or two, I'll test this buffer out. I know that this stand is gonna be more than adequate, 
Yes, I managed to smash the living daylights out of my thumb during this build. That stand is heavy. And when you're dealing with that kind of weight, you have to be purposeful in all your movements. Unfortunately, when I was loading that thing up on the dolly, I went to stand the dolly up. The top plate slid down with the bottom plate, obviously. And when the top plate met the handle on the dolly, it crushed my thumb. Not a good feeling. Well, this video took a lot longer to post than I was expecting. In the meantime, I was able to get the buffing wheels in and here it is all together and running and I have to say this is so far beyond my expectations I just can't believe how well this runs compared to the Harbor Freight don't get me wrong, there is a huge cost difference. I mean, we're talking $60 versus, I believe I paid $180 on sale for this buffing wheel. That said, we're talking five, six inches versus 10 inches. Lots of different accessories that are available for this particular buffer. It's a one horsepower motor versus a half horsepower. We're not even in the same realm when it comes to the two different tools. I was very happy with the buffing wheel I had from Harbor Freight until it just continually kept coming apart. I mean, there's so much vibration in that unit that no matter what I did, I used Loctite, I used all kinds of different things that would eventually shake loose and, and that that motor housing and everything was just coming apart. This was definitely worth the upgrade for me. I use this buffer a ton and I have a lot of cool projects in the future that I want to use it on. It's definitely worth the extra expense to me. It may not be to everybody, but I wanted you to see the difference and that's why I took the time to film. Again, here's a quick video showing just how poorly the Harbor Freight system was working. I couldn't really do anything with it by the time I finally decided to replace it. This isn't where it's going to end up. I'm going to end up moving it. But I have to say I am very, very happy with not only the stand but with the buffer. And I just want to say thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below. And if you have not subscribed and you find these videos useful, please subscribe because I'm going to be adding all kinds of content over the next year. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.